Okay, uh, this is a video showing the removal of a bottom bracket on an old 1988 Shogun. As you can see, the markings on this one are Tang. T-A-N-G-E. <clears throat> Tang. Not sure how to pronounce it, but on this bike, the, the uh, axle was wobbly. And... Um, so I started to remove the uh, bottom bracket so that I could um, re-grease it and tighten it up because it's an old, old bike. Now, what I found was normally you remove the adjustable cup. So I've already taken the lock ring off here. You remove the adjustable cup, which is this side, this one first. And then you might have some difficulty removing the fixed cup. But on this bike, I had the difficulty in removing the adjustable cup. Could not get it off with any method. And then, in um, desperation, I said, well, let me try to remove the fixed cup first. And it turned out, as soon as I tried doing that, the fixed cup was actually loose. And that was the actual problem with the bike now. Uh, the adjustable cup has to be adjustable. Tightening the fixed cup would not provide a solution here, aside from the fact that I want to break this down so I can re-crease everything. Now, in trying to get off this adjustable cup, uh, I didn't have any special tool for this. The first thing I tried was just something that would fit into here. Okay, it's not an ideal fit because the tips are round. Okay, more or less rounded at the ends. You can kind of take my word for it. You can kind of see it's a round profile. Okay, now the slots are square. Okay, there's plenty to grab if you had the right shape tool. Uh, I could not do it with these pliers. Part of it was I had to be pushing in to keep them from slipping. I didn't have a lot of leverage because I just had, you know, about four inches or so there. That was my first attempt. My second attempt, after reviewing online, was to try this technique which I read online for removing the fixed cup, but I realized it will apply in both sides. So what the technique is, is to use a bolt and then basically a section of pipe or, although in this case I'm using a socket, a deep weld socket because it will fit. So the idea is to take the socket, you place it in the position of the bottom bracket, you then feed through the bolt. You put a washer on it, you put this screw on there, let's say. Hold on, I'll use pause just for a second here. Okay, now the idea on this was you would tighten this up first. Then after it was completely tight, you would use the bolt head on that side and start turning it. And the friction of the washer against the adjustable cup would actually rotate the adjustable cup. I couldn't get it to work because no matter how, how much I tightened it, when I went to turn it, the nut and the a bolt would turn but let's say the washer wouldn't turn, or if the washer turned, the, the, the adjustable cup wouldn't turn. The idea is there was nothing to grip. The grip on the adjustable cup had too many services with not enough friction. Okay, so I did try adjust, modifying this slightly in the following manner, using what I'd seen on a couple other YouTube videos. Okay, I'm going to hit pause and just so I can take this off. Okay. okay, the next idea was to use a technique where I would take these, um, the spanner, which is a tool that's designed for this type of thing. And then to keep the spanner from popping out, Now, 
I have about whew, six inches of leverage. Uh, and the spanner won't pop out because of the washer is keeping it in. And I can also use a wrench and using the wrench and the spanner at the same time try to generate enough force to rotate it. Now, I, I still couldn't get this to work. And, um, okay, hold on. And it's not ideal anyway because this is designed for circular holes. And in, uh, in this slot, you're going to get a lot of force on a very small area and it could damage the um, adjustable cup. And of course, it could damage the spanner and break off these pins. Okay, and these are not replaceable. So after that, I tried the idea of trying to find something that would fit into this slot. In fact, because the slot is completely rectangular, what I'd really like to find is a piece of bar stock of the right width and thickness, and then long enough so I could put a wrench on it and get a significant force. I'm sure. They might have at one time had a special tool. This is a freewheel tool that almost looks like it might fit, but it doesn't. If the teeth are, are the wrong shape, okay? Um, here's what I was able to find by just by looking around the house for an hour or so, trying to find all the pieces of bar stock. What I found was this is actually the head, a cutter head on a woodworking tool. But it happens to have a shape which is quite similar in width. It's not perfect, of course, but it's pretty good. And it happened to have this hole in it. Now with the hole in it, with the hole in it, I could put a screwdriver in it. And with the screwdriver, I had now more like all maybe almost a foot of leverage and I could push in at the same time it's not ideal with those teeth on the cutter head I couldn't push in with my hand on that but I could push on the bar the bar of the screwdriver and then this is what actually uh, got this to, to, to free up it's I haven't taken it out yet I just got it so it started moving and I can't do it with even with one hand because it is in very tight. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this back and forth uh, with the uh, penetrating oil until I get it out nice and clean. Okay, I'll... okay, I backed this out quite a bit more so then now it's actually can be removed by hand. Not quite. It can be turned by hand. Oh, here we go. It looks okay uh, when working on the bottom bracket. This side, which is the non-drive side, is always right hand threaded. So it's the normal thread type. The other side, you have to always be careful to make sure you're not stripping the threads, which I have done before. Okay, now I'm going to clean this up and I'll put it back together. This is... Um, the end for this bottom bracket removal.